highs and lows uh, PSB. It, it's a tough sport, you know. Look what, what's happened with Andrew Ern at the beginning of the year for us. Started off well, go to a knock hill test, and then we're wiped out with broken humerus. The knock on effect, if you like, from that, bringing in a young rookie rider to basically learn on the superbike. And, you know, Tom crashing out here on Friday. Massive high side, knocking the confidence to hell. The guys at the front are right on top of their game. You need to be consistent and very, very strong to beat them. And uh, we've got our work cut out. Oh, fast life, the fast living. You see the ambition, they won't pass drift. Look, we are not the same, it's not a game. I can swap it through the city in and out of lanes. Yeah, cause if I see it, then I want it. Then you better know I got it. And you're watching from the back, do the damn thing. I'm an outlaw, you can never catch me. I'm a first place, you can never. The jump from the super stock to the super bike is quite difficult and some people underestimate just how difficult it is. Chad caught up with Franco Bon to see exactly how he's getting on with Honda racing, his thoughts and feelings about the new bike and how life as a super bike rider is treating him. I just want to cast your mind back to 2020 British Talent Cup. And then we fast forward to 2023 and you're going from one single cylinder, 50 horsepower to four cylinder and probably 250 horsepower. Yeah. I mean, what were your Big expectations jump. for that massive jump? Yeah, to be honest, when I got to the track here on Wednesday, it sort of just came to me, to be honest. Like last time I was here, I was on a, a stock 600. It's just crazy. I've gone from one year, I would never ever have thought that I would have gone from stock 600 to next time I come to the track to be on a superbike, especially with this team. Yeah, it's a bit weird, to be honest. And obviously, the, the team that you had in Superstock are a great team that we know really well, but now you're in Superbike, you've got Spidey, you've got Crew Chiefs, you've got a tyre technician. How does that feel to have so many people? Yeah, yeah, to be fair, at the start, it was a little bit intimidating, to be honest. I'm only used to Dave coming up to me, just a few questions and that's it, but obviously coming in in this team, there's one person asking one thing, there's lots of people around you. I need to get used to it, to be honest. If I want to be a super bike rider, it's something I've got to get used to, really. Yeah, I don't think people appreciate how big of a step from British Superstock to British Superbike is. Yeah. I mean, this is the most competitive domestic series in the world. I think a lot of people said that it's not really a big step and the bikes are fairly similar. Um, just obviously because of the lap times, what the stockers are doing compared to Superbike. So I was sort of expecting not a crazy big jump. Then I remember getting on the bike at Cadwell and just thinking, Jesus, this was so... I couldn't be anywhere further from the point, to be honest. Absolutely crazy jump. It's a lot bigger jump than most people realise. They think it's the same bike, just a bit more power. But the way the bike's set up, the options we've got that we can change with offsets, head angles, linkages, swing arms, all makes a massive difference to the bike. The bike's a lot more physical. It's stiffer, more power, more torque, and it's just, it's a lot bigger step than people realise. The way the bike turns, the brakes, the chassis, there's just so many different factors. Um, obviously you've got longer races, more races, more sessions, so it's just the whole package was a massive step from Superstock. Like we said to Franco, what we really wanted to really, really achieve out of the first two, three, four rounds was try and finish every session. If you do, we're probably going to get 500 plus kilometres per weekend, four rounds, 2,000k under your belt, and then the bike's going to start to feel a bit like a glove or something you're used to, where maybe you can show some of the signs and you know what he's capable of on the fire load. And we touched on you've got Spider and you've got your crew chiefs and everybody looking after you, but you've also yeah. got the guys whose bike you're riding sat in your corner as well. Yeah, a little bit weird, really. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew's actually helped me a lot, to be honest, because um, obviously he's not had a lot to do over the weekend, so he's been going out spotting in different places. So he's actually given me a lot of help over the last few rounds, trying to make me go quicker and help me out on the track. Yeah, it must be strange to ride into a garage and see the guy sat in the corner and you're <laughs> yeah. like, I've just borrowed your bike. Yeah, and he, you can tell he wants it back. <laughs> 
that's our thoughts on the up-and-coming rider, Franco Bon. Let's move to the more experienced side of the garage. Chad caught up with Tom Neve to see exactly how he's getting on with the 2023 season so far. Tom, it's been like a up and down year. There's been moments of absolute, like just riding genius, like Knock Hill, best ever result. Silverstone, where you went from the back, mid 15 places in one race. And I think you've got the record for the most overtakes already this season. Yeah, I, th I think I'm leading the, the Fast Forward Award or somewhere there and thereabouts, but I don't know if I should be too proud of that because that means you qualify really poorly and you always move forward. It'd be nice to actually qualify well and just only make a few places up because yeah. I'm, I'm already up the grid and from qualifying. But there's little things I need to work on and it's certainly been a bit of a roller coaster ride just lately, but the light's at the end of the tunnel, I can see that, but yeah. it's... Um, for it to come together in Superbike, everything has to be just right, and it is, it's hard work, it's a hard game to crack. So you made that jump from Superstock to Superbike. It's a big jump, a lot bigger than people think. Franco's doing the same now. Is, it, is that gap bigger than you expected, or how hard is that? Huge, I don't know. There's very few rides that come through and go straight to the front. I can't name any, any names. Everyone will always show bits of promise, but to come in year one and go bang, it's just, it's like, it's unheard of really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the DNA of the bike is still a Honda. The chassis is still the same as what you have in Superstock, but we have all these bolt on parts that make the bike quite rigid. Obviously the potential of the bike is far greater than a Superstock machine, but to ride it within the window, then it needs to be ridden within to make that lap time. Yeah is so fine and either side of it is very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a super bike, it's so much harder, you know, you don't feel everything that's happening, you don't feel the rear all the time, you don't feel it spinning until it's really spinning and they just need to continue to adapt. You know, there's absolutely no question Tom and Franco's talent. Tom's a British Superstock champion. He's won races for two seasons at Superstock. You know, he's done his groundwork to come to Superbikes, and it's just waiting in that moment for a click in, now in Superbikes. Uh, Scott, new crew chief for this year. How's that relationship working? Um, is it more data-led or is it more you personal input? No, Scott, Scott's mega. He's, he's, quite a, he's quite new to the game in terms of crew chief. He's always been with Honda as a chassis mechanic and he's, he's come through and he's a mega guy. He's so chilled and calm and he's, it's really got my back and I think that dynamic really works with me sort of coming in and trying to farm my way in Superbike. Tom likes his bike very similar to a road or a stock bike feel. Whenever he's ridden a stock bike or even a road bike, at, you know, at a test track day, he's always looking for that kind of a feel of that bike. The Superbike works in a very, very narrow window and trying to get that feel whilst but, you know, getting the optimum out of the bike is very, very difficult because the window is so small. First one would just be like sitting in wallow and push. Yeah, you see the it second here, shot was oh. harder, it would yeah, this is spin soft, wheelie and then go into like a head shake. It would like transfer through the whole bike. Yeah. So don't get me wrong, this bike is never, I've, it's always been mega on a prod and I've always had grip, it's always loaded tire and give me it's feeling back. back. Now it's just like, it feels like you've got, I've got 50 PSI on the back tire. Yeah. It's giving Tom that bike that he's, that he's gonna need for FP1 and then work together to, you know, to build through the weekend and you know, in harmony. And if, if he starts well, it's like a snowball effect there. We'll, we'll race well because we're on a positive vibe throughout the whole weekend. Not kill, prime example, yeah. I don't need the best, not saying Scott isn't, but I don't need the best crew chief in the world at the minute. At the minute, it's, it's more about personal development and understanding and having like a, a people person and someone who gets me and yeah. is there to prop me up when it doesn't quite go as well. Yeah, it's yeah. far more important at the minute. And Scott's fitted that mould perfectly for me and is, um, yeah, he's is, is a great guy to work with. From the young guns of the BSV team to the more experienced road racer, that is John McGuinness. 30 lucky customers came to collect their John McGuinness replica Fireblade from Honda Racing UK. John, uh, it's quite a, an emotional day really. It's something I've never witnessed to see customers meeting you buying your anniversary replica. How's it been so far? Yeah, cool day. Uh, like I say, a little bit emotional. I think that it's uh, amazing to get all these bikes together. And for me, I, my journey on the bike, I rode it. So I got the ultimate 
you know, experience yeah. from it. And uh, but to see the people come and collect their bikes, see how happy they are, and uh, see them get a, a nosy around the workshop, see how it all operates and what it's all about, is the icing on the cake for me. You know, I, t I take it for granted a little bit because I get to, to do all the cool things. But for them, there's they don't get many opportunities. So uh, to see everybody today smiling, happy, and, and happy what they've and what they've bought into, and uh, you know, it's got my heart and soul in it anyway. So uh, it's yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the day, and it's still going on. Everybody's happy, and you know, I'm in my element. I'm just talking motorbikes. I think talking to a few customers, it's really. I think they're quite surprised how close it mirrors your race bike because they've not seen the race bike. They'd only seen the road bike, and now they've seen the race bike. They're like, wow, it's, it is so close. Absolutely, and you know, the super a super stock bike holds a lot record now around the Alaman TT. So that's a, a bike you can go and buy in the shop. So, you know, that uh, basically a, a road bike now is one of these with the lights off, you know, yeah. so, so close with the power and the way they work and how they operate and things. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's got to be right. You know, there's guys have spent a lot of time making it right. And uh, when we originally was me and Harv were talking about it, what we we're going to do. And, you know, I spent a lot of time pulling every single picture out that I have from all my journey at the TT and, and made sure that it was the bike, the right thing. And uh, and it's all out documented in a in a bike as well. And they also get a few little cool bits as well. I get a, a glass um, numbered one to 30 replica of, well, it's, it's this bike as well yeah. in a glass. I don't know what they call it, like a yeah, yeah yeah ornament thing. Which, uh, winning bullseye. Yeah. Every time I look at these bikes, I just glance at one of the pictures and I go, I won that race. Uh, I remember that race. So you know, it's, it all comes flooding back to me. So it's all all there to to see. You know, a hundred starts that day. I'm at my hundred and eighth start now. So you know, we're still carrying on the journey. So uh, I'm loving it. I saw you got slightly tricked out earlier. So what the guy bought bike number fourteen, sixteen, and we had to remember what your sixteenth win was. So I'll try you on a different one. <laughs> So if I bought bike number eight, what was your eighth win? Oof. Uh, Kurt bowled me again there. Uh, Go on, there's a picture. Eighth win. So uh, well, my first win's 1999, 250. Second win was on the AMDM single. Third win. That's a wait a bit, I think. Yeah, third win would be the 400. Then it'd be the 400 again. No, I wouldn't. Yamaha, so that's four, fifth, six, seventh. You you would have to pick a Yamaha, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think it was a Yamaha R1 2005. That's my eighth win. But well, that's the great bit about the bike, though, isn't it? You could just go around it and and go. Oh yeah, remember that one. Oh yeah, remember that one. I see, I see it might might be just wrapped around there the Yamaha bit. Right? Yeah, yeah hiding around the back. What I like is the 400 one. Like people yeah. forget about the 400s. It's funny, like I mean that again. I didn't know anything about 400s at the time. I just thought, well, that might be a cheeky little win that. And uh, I looked. It was funny. I looked through the through the results. In, in them days, you, you still got papers with results in it. Yeah, yeah. Who's doing the winning on a 400 here? And there was a lad called Steve Tomes. Uh, he was a real good peddler, and he was winning all these championships, New Year of 400 championships. So. I rung the bloke, Ricky Leddy. I said, I said, pick the phone. I said, you fancy in a TT? I never spoke to him in my life before. And he said, well, yeah, well, not, we'll ever do. So, and then I won the last two ever seen, uh, 400 TTs. So, you know, it's another little, dude, it's slightly easier wins, I suppose. But, you know, it was maybe I was cherry picking a little bit, but it's still a win. So, uh, and you know, it's such a cool bike to ride. And nowadays you've got to ride these things with 200 million horsepower. Then if you're learning your trade, they weren't a bad yeah, little bike yeah. to ride, you know? So yeah, it's, you know, it's another, Another silver lady in the in the trophy cabinet, so I'll take it. Cool. And you, you've got a replica of that four hundred, have you not? No, no, no four hundred on there. Do you know, I met the guy who has my my bike, and there's a, a Manx fellow with a, a big bike collection, and he won't part with it. He won't part with it. So, uh, yeah, it was quite a, that last four hundred. It was quite a weird thing. It had like a had like an ass R one seat and a Ducati tank or something like that. It was a bit of a bit of a weird sort of thing but it, it worked and we won you know we had a one high exhaust one side and a low exhaust the other side and i didn't know nothing about it i just thought oh, it looks looks nice and you know you, you you've got other things on other priority races around the super bikes and 
one thing or another and you know and then that was just an extra extra ride for me jumped on it won the race and everybody was happy shook hands and probably made the mic fight with a few more quid and off, sure, off everybody won yeah come on thanks for your time you've got lots of uh customers wanting your signature on on petrol tanks so i'll leave you to mingle but thanks for your time mate cheers boys. cheers mate that's it from honda racing here in laufen big thanks to the team for showing us behind the scenes but let's get back to the action at brands hatch Right, in terms of uh, an emotional and an up and down weekend, this has got to be one of the most. I'm not afraid to say it's probably been my worst weekend, emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever you want to call it. For whatever reason, it's been a tricky old weekend from FP2 and I, that monster high side, it really, it sort of really stung me that did. And then we were straight into a wet race and I never really recovered any confidence from that crash before we went into that wet race and that was just a disaster. You start at the back of the grid for race two and I get wiped out on the first lap. So I'm from the back of the grid again in the second race, so there was no momentum all weekend. Just use this race to start to build, do you know what I mean? You can do it. I'm talking about all the negatives here, but I'll, I'll say it as it is, I wear my heart on the sleeve and I'll come away from this weekend, I'll rationalise, clear my head and come back. You know, only two rounds ago I'd had my best weekend in Superbike. So it's weird how the table can flip that quick, but if it can go that way that easy, it can also go back again, so I'm just going to keep my head up we're just over the halfway point now there's a lot of good tracks to come still and who knows what's around the corner that last race Franco that just looked like one of the best races that just looked fun yeah it's nice to come to a track that I like I said before go to Snetterton so I wasn't really enjoying it yeah I had really bad luck there I had really good luck here to be honest so come to a track that I enjoy to get a full race distance in, I've only yep. done a sprint race before, to get a full race in, 20 laps. It's quite physical at the end to be honest, but I ended up catching the group in the end, so really happy to get a race finished, a good result. It's good momentum to go on to the next race. Forwards moving forward, we've got a test at Cadwell Park. I need to get Tom's mojo back on board. We need to come away from there, having some confidence within what we've got, because Struxton, I know, Franco likes and I know Tom likes and the Fireblade's been great there in the past and um, we've got to turn this around.